this afternoon? Yeah, this afternoon. Well, the number of marks out just says only three, so basically about ten minutes, if that. Okay, so it's in all the original uh, images with, it, with us. If there's any issues, we can just reload them and pull them back as well. So yeah. Any of our undetected serious sexual offences or our major crime, our homicide, are never closed. We are continually reviewing them. So in those instances where we find that we have a critical exhibit that could help us to identify an offender and bring about a detection, if the current processes are not fit for purpose and won't deliver what we want forensically, then we would always look at other opportunities. And as long as we declare that at the point that we use it and declare it to the defence and the prosecution and the investigative team, then we would be willing to explore that if there were no other options. We have some cold cases at the moment that we're looking at that we're very much um, in a dilemma because it's an and or situation. Do we look at recovering DNA or do we look at recovering fingerprints? And there's no guarantee that either of them would give us the forensic evidence that we require. And because of the close relationship that MSU has with some of our local universities, we were aware of development of new technologies. So we've pendered any forensic examination or recovery until we've explored the opportunities that new technology might give us because it may well be if we go down the route of DNA or fingerprint recovery now, there will be no opportunities later. The instrument will pick up different spe chemical kind of species that are on the surface, so different components of that surface, um, and it will tell you the location of these chemical species. So, for example, with the fingerprint analysis, it can pick up things like salt, so sodium or potassium, um, different things that come from your sweat, so lipids, um, and it can tell you the location of these on the surface, and that's what gives you the, the fingerprint image. Um, and the um, peaks that are coming from kind of the left-hand side are the lower mass ions. Normally when you recover a fingerprint what you would do is you would take a picture of it on that surface and if the, the background material is such that you can't actually see that fingerprint very well then you're never going to be able to take a picture and, you, and that's never going to be admissible as evidence. The second thing that, that can happen for example also is that the, the reagents that you would use to try and develop the finger mark can also react adversely with the fingerprint or the surface that it's on and again make it very difficult for you to visualise it. We scan this ion beam across the surface and molecular fragments are emitted from that surface and we can basically move our ion beam around and work out where different materials are.
and conventional methods what you would do is you would actually develop the finger mark on the surface and you would take a picture of it so you could have the object with a clearly visible fingerprint on it and you would also have a photograph that would be admissible in court. What this technique does is it uses this iron beam to, to, to move around on the surface and just tell us where different concentrations of different material are. It's not actually making that print visible on the object.